Record highs across the board. Uh, trade optimism moving these markets higher after reports that the U.S. is considering a rollback of China tariffs as part of a phase one deal. And joining us now is Ryan Payne. He's the president of Payne Capital Management. Uh, Ryan, is it strictly trade that's moving these markets higher today? Uh, I think absolutely, right? I mean, trade has driven the markets all summer long. Uh, we've been waiting for some clarity there. And I think that's been the big thing. It's like, you know, if you look at companies, they just need to know what to do right now. They need some clarity so they can make some business decisions. CapEx, CapEx is good for GDP, it's good for earnings, and then you know, ideally that drives the markets even higher. Uh, this report in the Financial Times that, that we're referring to this morning it does say uh, that the U.S. could consider is considering dropping some of these tariffs on China. Why are we seeing more of a market reaction to this? Because, I mean, this would be real progress toward a resolution, right? Tim, don't get greedy. We've had a couple great days in the market yeah, here. Yeah, but, but I'm talking <laughs> about this one news item came out early this morning in the Financial Times. I mean, this is the type of stuff uh, that if this were to actually happen, it would show significant progress and that we were on the road to a resolution like you talked about getting rid of that uncertainty that uh, investors are but worried about. But is it about. a win? Is, it, is that a win for the Trump administration and for the markets? Oh, definitely. I mean, politically, he's needed a deal. We've talked about that for a long time. And economically, China's needed a deal. So I think they're both getting what they want here, and they're both saving face, which is really critical to the Chinese. So I think with both those things happening, it's just really setting up for like this next leg of the bull market here, in my opinion. Let's talk about earnings. Uh, Earnings set to slide on the S&P 500, 2.7% here in the third quarter. But as usual, right, these companies beating expectations. What do you make of this earnings season? I mean, awesome again, right? We're at 75% beat for this quarter, which is above the average, about 65% beating for the quarter. So again, it's just another surprise in the positive, And invariably, that's how bull markets go. You have a lot of pessimism, which I love, because when investors are pessimistic, it's great for valuations. And surprises are in the positive. That's what a bull market looks like. But I think for the average viewer, right, the fact that earnings are set to decline it doesn't seem like a positive, right? So why do we see still that 2.7% drop on earnings for the S&P for the third quarter? Well, I mean, first off, right, third quarter, we knew it was going to be weak this year. It was going to be one of the weaker quarters of the year. Um, and again, it's less than we expected. If you looked at what analysts thought where earnings were going to be this quarter, it's going to be a lot lower. But this is kind of the trough right now, right? After this, earnings are going to start to go up. Fourth quarter looks really good. And I'm looking next year, like full year earnings are going to be like 10%. Like that's an awesome year for earnings. And that puts the S&P at like under 17 times forward earnings. Not to get too wonky, but that's relatively cheap. Despite the lack of business investment. Right. That's not even with that. Now if we get that China deal, we get to start to get some CapEx or in business investment. Man, like that could be amazing for earnings moving forward. How is a cloud of impeachment hanging over this market? I don't think it really is. I mean, we've had lots of drama since President Trump has been in office. And if you go back to the 90s, we had the Clinton impeachment. You had the same thing. You had low inflation. You had the Fed actually cut interest rates back then. You had a lot of growth. And the market did phenomenally well. So I think you kind of have the same backdrop right now that you saw back in the So if, if, if the House does end up impeaching the president, you don't anticipate that there will be significant market reaction over any sort of uncertainty there because nothing would happen in the Senate? I mean, if you look at the 90s as kind of the litmus test, I'd say no. And I just think that, look, the market's slave to earnings, slave to the economy. And I just think those numbers are going to continue to come in better than better that you can kind of ignore the noise that's happening on Capitol Hill. Can we talk Uber uh, for a minute? Oh, boy. Are you an Uber <laughs> user? I'm an Uber user occasionally, but I also use Lyft. Okay. Uh, why do you why do you use <laughs> you're, one you're part of the problem. The other? <laughs> part of the problem. For those both of those companies. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I, I mean it just depends on what's a little bit cheaper and I think Lyft sometimes in the city is cheaper. But look, they both have their problems, another billion dollars in losses. The biggest thing is their biggest overhead is the drivers. And if they become employees, that's gonna be a big problem for all these you know, hailing, uh, you know, whatever you call them, driving services that aren't caps. Do they say anything big picture about the overall economy or stock market, considering that Uber still does have more than 100 million users? No, I think it's about valuation, and it's down 30% since the IPO, and I think it speaks about the IPO market in general. And the IPO market, let's face it, is very overvalued. We just saw WeWork, you know, scrapping their IPO. So I think it's more indicative of what's going on there because if you look at the overall economy and you look at overall companies right now, you know, earnings are attractive and, you know, American households are in great shape. So, I mean, these are all the things you want to see when you're invested in the stock market. You mentioned that you like pessimism because it provides the opportunity to gain. Would you be buying Uber today with a slide? Ooh, now that's a valuation play. They make no money. I probably wouldn't be touching Uber here at the 10-foot pole. There's too many other great values in the market. Value stocks are trading historically cheap. Foreign markets are just like 
one of the best values of all time. You've got to allocate your portfolio there. Uh, foreign markets, though, underperforming U.S. markets significantly. So what's the opportunity there? Well, you just said it, right? They've underperformed, so valuations are cheaper. And if you look at the next four quarters, the growth in Europe is going to be about the same as the, as the growth in U.S. companies. And I have 5% for U.S. companies, 4.6% for European companies, yet the valuation is 14 times forward earnings versus 18 for the S&P. So you're getting the same growth cheaper, and you're getting bigger dividend yields. Like, to me, that's an offer you can't refuse. You've got to be buying international here. What do you anticipate for the holiday season? I think it's be strong. I think the consumer's in great shape. I mean, if you look at their debt to their net worth right now, it's one of the best ever. You know, if you look at wages are going up right now, unemployment's extremely low. And if you look at like things like commodity prices are low, you know, for the consumer, things are cheap. Oil prices are low. Interest rates are low. They're in great shape. They're going to buy the season. Brian Payne, president of Payne Capital Management. It's always great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on Cheddar today. Thanks, Gary.